myself back up. Mom. At first, you popping bottles, getting money in the place. Next thing, you spending money on a lawyer uh -huh. for a case. Everybody hungry and they moving Everybody. like a safe. The coldest state farm, they be working uh -huh. with the Jakes. <laughs> to respect my journey i'm your host carl krauser the cruiser king king krauser aka that old black magic baby yeah what's good y'all man <laughs> trying to tell y'all happy to be back happy to be back man i've been tired boy i've been tired man it's been it's been an amazing roller coaster amazing journey man a very crazy journey man been doing a lot and started my rehab you know on my uh Keep that to myself. Start my rehab. You know what I mean? And um, starting training. And everything has been going well. And I'm just slowly, slowly getting back to it. You know, I'm always rocking with the healthy vibe. Keeping the ginger juice alive. Going to make some ginger juice. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow, choke on your spit. Got some orange juice. Got some frozen orange juice right here, boy. I had to add some more OJ on it. Boy, you got to keep you healthy, man. got to stay healthy. But I'm going to answer a couple of fan questions. And next uh, next time I answer fan questions will be tomorrow. And I'll have some, uh, I'll have my card with me and everything just to show love to the fans and show love to everybody else. Thank you to the new subscribers. You know, always humbly appreciate you. Thank you very much. It's always a vibe when y'all come in and tune in. You know, it's 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 a blessing to have cool fans wanting to hear about your journey, wanting to know what you're doing, and you want to give them something too as well. You know what I mean? Because, like I said, I gave you from growing up in the Bronx. I gave you growing up as a teenager. I gave you my journey from playing at Rucker Park. I gave you my journey playing in UDC. I mean, tournaments like Dykeman, tournaments like Hoops in the Sun in the Bronx. Shout out to Hoops in the Sun. Like I said, all of these different great tournaments, even Doc's tournament that he had on the weekends with uh, with the Broncos down in Madison Broncos on 28th Street. And all of these different tournaments, even go to his tournament in Queens, even going to UDC in the Queens real quick. You know, all of these were, all these places were part of my journey, going to Webster, PAL, going to different PALs and playing Kids Bay, and other places, you know what I mean? It was like, I talked about my AAU journey some, you know, letting you know the All-Americans I played against, NBA stars, letting you know we were traveling. We were traveling as young kids, I mean, young teenagers, you know what I mean? Getting, getting to see the world and getting to see that life was bigger than our neighborhood. And once you figure out and understand that life is bigger than your neighborhood, life is more there's more to life than just hanging out in front of the buildings and getting chased by cops. It's more to life than going up and down the hills, walking up and down the streets and the alleys and doing stupid stuff, ignorant stuff, you know, trying to show you tough. There's more to life than being a bully to somebody else on the next street or anywhere else. There's more than life than just getting up and eating the same different thing. I mean, the same thing. And you, 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 you're like wanting to taste something different. Not just only the food. You want to taste that value of life, that good part of life. And it's out there for you. All you have to do is really fight for it. You're going to have to get your education. When we were younger, it was smart not to be ignorant. Get what I'm saying? It was smart not to be ignorant. Not to have the lack of knowledge made you weak. You get what I'm saying? It makes you vulnerable because you don't know what somebody else is talking about. You don't know and you're not educated on it. You're ignorant to the fact on any different subject. And as a young kid, I never wanted to be that. I disliked the word ignorant since a kid when I was first called that. <laughs> you know, my sister was playing, but... It was like, yo, 
I don't like that word. I looked up the word real quick. And I was like, no, ho, ho, ho. I'll never be ignorant again. But sometimes you're going to be ignorant to certain subjects. Yes, you're not going to know everything. But I'm going to go ahead and research and I'm going to study and I'm going to read and I'm going to open my mind up first and open up my imagination to what's out there in life. There's so much you can achieve. And you have to just try to structure your mind and change your mind, change your way of thinking, reshape the way that you're thinking and living and try to go out there and try something different. The negative way, the negative energy, harboring this energy is just, it's, 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 it's disgusting, it's nasty, and it's detrimental to your health. It's a bad thing. You get what I'm saying? It makes you sit there and just evil, dark thoughts. You just have bad feelings. You want to harm somebody. You want to retaliate. You want to do this. You want to do that. And the only person that suffers is you eternally. Your soul gets affected. Your personal body gets affected. Your avatar, that gets affected. All of it. Your family is affected. All the decision making that you make, all the decisions that you make, it affects your family too. It impacts your family. Don't think that it doesn't. There's people that care about you, whether or not you don't want to acknowledge it or whether or not you want to accept it. There's somebody in the world that you can find to either guide you, help you, or care. You know, I don't know about funding, <laughs> but I know they can guide you and help you in some type of way. Then that's a form of caring to a certain extent. So try to be around people that cares about you, that's willing to uplift you and help you when you're down. Try to be around certain people like that, but don't let people use you. If somebody does something nice for you, don't let them hold her or him, hold it over your head like you owe them your life. Because you don't. They should have done it out of the kindness of their heart and accept that. Don't, don't sit there and act like you have to die for these people or you have to feel overwhelmed with this, this, this burden. That, oh my goodness, I have to act like this. Listen to me. Somebody that really cares about you, that really, really cares about you, when they help you, it's genuine out the heart. They don't want anything back. They just want you to know that they have your back. They want you to know that you have a real brother or sister or a real human being that's there for you. A real child of God that's showing that piece of his life shining bright, reflecting right off of him. To me, to you. And that's what it's about. Helping somebody else. Doing better. Trying to excel. Trying to succeed. And trying to open up your mind to different things in life. And trying different things in life that is good and positive and beneficial to yourself, your health, and your family. It has to be that. Don't be out there giving your whole life and yourself up for opportunity and club sausage, in jail or prison. You don't want to be there. The devil lives there. You get what I'm saying? Yes, God is there. Angels are there trying to fight. They're trying to fight for souls in there. So fight for your soul outside while you're free. God bless the ones that are inside. If you're inside, God bless you. I want you to fight hard and be positive, man. Change your life too, brother or sister. Super fat. Change your life, man. It's better trying to do good than always being good at doing bad. It's always that. That's a fact. One plus one is two, never two and a half. You do the math. It's that old black magic, man. I love y'all, B. It's peace, positive love, positive energy. <laughs> it's always love. Hey, man, check out these videos. Check out these clips. Subscribe. Maybe hit the like button. You know what I mean? Show your love, man. It's all good. It's cool. I hear and I see these people on these on these platforms hating sometimes. I see it. I see it. You know it's me. I see it. Uh, and pardon me if I made anybody think I was leaving off that, you know, off that little outro spit. But it was just, a, it's the energy. It builds up. It's that good New York City, good Virgin Islands, St. Croix energy. It just builds up the way we flow, the way the lingo let go. It's just crazy. So sometimes I have to control myself. Pardon me. Or himself but yeah see these people <laughs> you know this is crazy to me it's funny it's comical you know what i mean it's comedy it's like 
yo, you want to hate on me because I did well in life. I did my thing in life, and I did well on the call. I did well off the court. I was balling. I seen the guy talking about, oh, he hit one shot, and everybody loves him. What? <laughs> hit one shot? Is this guy drunk? What drugs are you on, champ? That's a lie. I see another thing. We're not going to give him too much time. He just, he got to knock it off, man. K.I.O. He got to knock it off. It's crazy. And I see another guy talk, <laughs> talking about I had 51 points in my last game, champ. Look, people, look. If y'all want to say something nice and show some love, just say something nice and show love. Don't come up with these stats and I got it from this because some of these stats aren't accurate. You know what I mean? They're inaccurate. So you don't want to put out these things, attaching them to people's names, and they're not true. Get what I'm saying? You want to show love? Show love to me. Get what I'm saying? You can show love to me. I appreciate it. But you don't need to come up and, and, and copy and paste or read and write something real quick and then type it in and do all this other stuff. And then front like you, sh it's like, see, it makes me say that, like front like you're showing love because I didn't have 51 points in my last game against James White and those guys at Hall Hargrave Military School, Ricky Shields and those guys. And I forgot Big E. Williams. He played at Ohio State at the time. And um, yeah, I, I literally like, I didn't have 51 points. I had 63 points and I only hit one three-pointer and I was playing with the broken elbow. Tubby Smith was sitting right there front and center at Hargrave Military School. 100%. You know what I mean? So I was out there wrecking. I fouled out six of their players. James White started guarding me at the end of the game, and I still was killing. They could put tall players on me. It don't matter. I've been cooking tall players, short players, shorter than short players. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've been cooking anybody. Super tall players, athletic players, super strong Athletic players, I'm talking about them extra strong country dudes, short as ever, underneath, trying to get underneath you and this and that. I'm super bop, bop, super bopping them crazy quick, bop, bop, in and out, bop, 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 squirrel spin crazy, whatever I want. And in the back down, bang, come on, turn spin, light chicken in the bucket, money, I'm telling you, I do this for real. So, it was nothing to chef somebody up real quick, it was nothing, it's the master chef here, I'm cool. You know, it's that old black magic. I'm cool. Gotta keep my island cool. Chill. But yo, it's like these people wanted me to do bad so bad. It made me play so hard. And I was already going to play so hard. Like, and go crazy. Pause on the hard. Going crazy. And I'm just like, they can't stop my will. They can't stop this energy. They can't stop what's, what God was already providing for me already and all I had to do was bring myself to the court and do my thing you get what I'm saying like it's a different type of mentality my focus my energy is just way different than everybody else's I have extra gears too when I play so when you're tired I lock in like Michael Jordan and different and I see that and I hunt for you I hunt for you and I love harassing you and I love playing defense so Making defense a part of my game was very, very, very easy for me because it's it's about trying and competing and being willing to learn. See, defense has principles too, and you had to learn those principles to be a very good defender, and you have to put all of this together, just like you have to do in different parts of the game. You have to put it all together. And you have to understand, once you put these things together, these different parts of the game, and make one, Forming like Voltron, boy, boy, boy. Sheesh. For you young people, Voltron's an old cartoon. You know, they form together and make one, but it's bananas, man. You know, for some of you older people, it's kind of like, I mean, for some of you young people, kind of like Power Rangers. It's not like Power Rangers. No, I'm not saying that is, but I'm saying it's like when you form groups together, different parts to make one whole. Okay. So it's 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 amazing and it's special man it's a great feeling to work at things man to have that work ethic man and just to keep up uh, keep that understanding that i had to work <clears throat> excuse me oh yeah that ice is melting 
just to keep that understanding, I had to work harder than everybody else. I had to work real hard. And I had to understand nobody's going to give me anything. I had to get seize the opportunity. When somebody else was coming to see somebody else, I got to do my thing and shine. I got to shine. I didn't try to do it like in a way to look crazy and go nut and not pass the ball or nothing like that. No. I stood out in different ways, talking on defense, sharing the ball, actually kicking the ball up. You know what I mean? Throwing alley-oops, throwing good passes, bounce passes. You know what I mean? Making good plays, finishing at the rim with both hands, making finishes different ways. Showing the reverse finish, showing this finish, left hand finish. Float game was on the money, on point and on money. That thing was crazy. I'm up there, teardrop, float me. I'm sitting there looking at that thing. God. It's fun to see that drop over those bigs when you hit them with the move to guard. And then you just float from the foul line. Bow. Hit him. Like, I had to learn how to hit it from the top of the key, the floater. I had to learn how to hit the floater going left and right. Hit at the uh, elbow, too, as well. And then hit during the, down the middle. Going down the middle. Float from the foul line. Doesn't matter because some of those, like, floaters, man, they won so many games for me. They won so many games for my team and my teammates. It's just like, why not practice these things? I'll do my floater, right hand, left hand, doesn't matter. Any hand. Any hand I could do my floater. You know, it's just I worked on it a lot. I was in the park, I was in different gyms, and I used certain people's workout dummies, and I was doing my thing. You know what I mean? That's the way you're supposed to do it. So, you know, a fan asked me to get to the fan question now. <laughs> fan asked me, man, what was it like playing? Like in New York City as a teenager in these different like grown tournaments like Dykeman like I, I I brought up like Hoops in the Sun like I brought up like Rucker Park you know what I mean it's like in different tournaments you know Summer Madness in a Pathmark tournament salute to the Bronx salute to Harlem salute to Queens salute to Brooklyn salute to Long Island Staten Island salute to the whole New York City and the whole New York State Salute and positive love and positive vibes to the world. Always love to the world. But playing in those tournaments was crazy. Even in New Rochelle, playing in certain tournaments, that wasn't unlimited, but it was crazy playing out there. See, when we playing in these different tournaments in New York City, we have all of these New York legends and streetball legends. And some people that have went on and played overseas basketball too as well. And sometimes we had the... uh Sometimes we had NBA players come and bless us, you know, and, and certain people knew certain NBA players, so they came through and played with us, you know, and we had we had uh, got that experience. And that, that experience, I don't think, like, I feel bad that the young people can't get a chance, that, that won't get a chance to experience what it is to see a, a group of good basketball players respectfully in their own right playing against each other and they all playing at a high level and you get a chance to watch that as a kid 13 14 15 years old even younger than that but you start playing and start playing more around that time and getting real good so it was like man to watch all of those different players man all of those players like we always name master rob you know we had big guy named Big Les, though. We had Bad Boy John. We had Ampel come through. We had Big Troy Truesdale come through. God bless the dead. We had Sham God come through. Chauncey Billups come through. Darko Milicek come through. We had, I mean, I'm just talking about a bunch of people, man. It's, it's crazy. Even Speedy came to play from above the rim. Even uh, my man A Train, Otto Bernard, Harlem Glow, try to represent all love. A lot. I'm talking about, man, look, I'm, man, sheesh, look, Dedrick Urban, always coming through the park. My man, Sia, left-handed, let's go. BK, Ice, Rome Ice. All of my, like, all my family, like, all of the players, man, all of the fellas, man. And God bless my man, Les Hardy, too. Yeah, big fella. I mean, not Les Hardy isn't the big fella, but God bless Officer Les Hardy, Les Hardy. God bless my man, always. And Big Les was from the first section. You know what I mean? He had a tryout with uh, Seattle Supersonics. Big Les was a cold killer down there, boy. Walking double, double. It was so cool to watch these games. Like, I'm talking about 
man, it was so much fun to be a young kid. And we stayed out there in that park all night just getting the experience. And I'm just watching, watching, watching. So when it was my time, I was like, man, I got to play hard. I got to be aggressive. And I got to be willing to get hit. But I got to focus on finishing. I didn't care about nothing about getting hit. I just wanted to finish. I didn't care. And if I get the open shot, I wanted to follow through, lock in, and pronate. Lock my arms in, follow through, snap that wrist, spread my fingers, and pronate. That's that. So it was it was fun, man. And after a while, you know, playing with those guys and getting roughed up and getting hit on the floor, pushed on the floor, knocked out the air, you know, hitting the head, you know, you get the you get the taste of that grown men's strength. You know what I mean? And you're already going through stuff in the projects and playing in the hood and different stuff and you know, so it's it was nothing to me. It was fun. It was exciting. It was like I felt I felt happy to be there to play against these guys. You know what I mean? I felt appreciative. You know what I mean? Because they welcomed me into that world where they seen I had game. They seen I had a future in my journey. And they blessed me with that opportunity to play in those tournaments. And super, super blessed and humbled by these opportunities. And thank you to all of them, man, from Shannon to Big Free, you know what I mean? God bless my man, you already know. And uh, salute to my man Isaac. Salute to Big Jeff Gordon, my man Jeff Jahar Gordon, and the Gordon family, everybody. You know what I mean? Except always, Bronx Tale forever. Salute to and respect to Doc always, Paul Doc Maselli. Salute, I'm talking about, but now I'm just talking about street ball first, but Doc is, you know, always a part of my life. And the street ball people, man, and salute to, uh, salute to Coach Chick, you know what I mean? Coach Malcolm, Dave Nelson, Big D, you know what I mean? Like, people that have, and have me in these street ball tournaments, you know what I mean? Not the, not the other AAU joints, the street ball. Salute to like J Bo, you know what I mean? G.I. Gill. Salute, respect, always love family. Facts. You know. And and a few other people, you know what I mean? Those people that put me in tournaments, you know what I mean? That looked out for me. Like my man Kenny Drift and all that. Like a lot of people. Salute to my man Red. Salute to Red. Salute to Tim. Salute to the other Red. Man. <laughs> Salute to White Ralph. My man. So, like, it's, it's, it's a bunch of people. Salute to Brian Cash. You know what I mean? Salute to you. Bronx there forever. 1744. Salute to Lil Cash. Trail. You know what I mean? Colin. Mama. All off. All pops. Everybody. Yo. Salute to the Castle Hill Tournament, man. Playing the Castle Hill Tournament. It was, it was fire. You know, whoever was coaching me, I can't remember right now. But every time in that cash roll tournament, yo, fam, thank you. I had fun in that tournament. Salute to my coach. Oh, my goodness. Hold up. Give me a second. Oh, this is Cody. This is Cody. Oh, man. Salute to everybody in Lambert, though, man. Salute to my coach, Lambert, you already know, RP. Man, who else, man? Everybody, man. Salute to the Bright family, facts and respect. And always love, happy birthday to Mr. Carl Nickerson. Salute family, always love. Salute to all the Nickerson family. Miss Nickerson, Mama Nickerson, Queen, yes. Paulie, my brother, way to do your thing. See Nick, my brother, way to do your thing. You know what I mean? Gotta drink that thing, boy, boy. Yo, so, in the last one, man, last question was, I'm gonna make this one quick, man. The last question was, how was it when I left St. Thomas More transferring after I got kicked out to from St. Thomas More to Notre Dame Prep? I think to me, man, it was, it was one of those things where I was happy not to be in jail. I was blessed not to be in jail and, and or prison. And uh, I made a dumb decision, you know what I mean? So I knew I had to make up for it. I had to make right for it because I didn't want to be, like I said, a person that returns back to the hood. 
a failure. I didn't want to feel like a failure. I don't care what nobody says. When you don't accomplish something, that's failing at it. Get what I'm saying? So I didn't want to fail at it. I was trying to accomplish my goal, which was to whatever I have to do to try to get to the NBA, you got to do it. Got to go hard at it. Got to believe in yourself. So when, when I was searching for other schools and I found out Joel Wiggin, I knew him. So he was going there. He's from the Bronx. Salute to Joel. X up. Respect. You know what I mean? Played at Rutgers University. He's from the Bronx. Salute to his family. Respect. And um, he was there. So I was like, you know, putting the word to the coach. Talk to him. He put in the word to the coach. And... Coach Bill Barton, he heard about me playing, and we won the championship just last year in the prep school at St. Thomas More, Mr. Double Double here, and uh, I got to St. I mean, I got to Notre Dame Prep. My dad dropped me off in Pittsburgh, Massachusetts, man, and then drove right away out, out, you know, at nighttime and drove right back to Brooklyn, and I'm like, damn. You know, my dad, I was nervous and scared for my dad. And I'm up all night with this coach, Bill Barton. And all of these people in the, in, the, in the players, they think that this man knows how to coach. And he was a football guy. He didn't know how to coach. Like I said this. So he took me to Walmart. We talked basketball. He seen that my basketball IQ was very high. He was like, I can help. You know, I was like, I'm trying to help this way any way I can. You know what I mean? I just came from out of bad situations. So... I'm just trying to succeed and do my thing. And what he did put me in position to help educate him in the in the, in the way when he was at, well, excuse me, <clears throat> in the subject he was ignorant and uneducated in. So I helped educate him in that area. And it happened that I was able to help my team. It just so happened that I was able to help my team, you know, just win more games, you know, and become more of a good team, more of a structured team, more of a team that believed in team defense and helping and having each other's back and trusting each other, more of a team that was willing to get out and run the floor and trusting that your point guard was going to kick the ball up and advance the ball to make it easier for you to get easy shots and trust in your abilities as well. That's what you show. You show you trust the, uh, your, 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 your shooting guard, your small forward or your power forward or your center. You trust their ability to catch the ball and finish on the play or make the right decision and the right read after you kick the ball up and advance the ball. So all of that goes into what I'm talking about. So I knew I can bring change. I knew I can bring energy. I knew I can bring a defensive presence. I knew I can uplift the team in a way which I just explained, you know, just sharing the ball and bringing that camaraderie together and bringing us full, full, Man, full circle, we was out there after we, we lost to uh, Sean McCann to them one time in uh, New Hampshire Prep, New Hampton Prep. And boy, was I killing me, Brandon Robinson, and the different people, man. Gerald Fitch and these guys, we was out there rocking, man. And I mean, Jermaine Fitch, excuse me, Jermaine Fitch. Man, we was out there rocking, man. Boy, I'm talking about all of us, a lot of us was rocking. And talking trash. I'm talking crazy to Rashad McCann's because he was trying to be like Vince Carter making the faces like, mm, like, like a little stupid shit. I was like, yo, that's so annoying. It's crazy to watch a person try to be like somebody so bad and do all the antics and everything. I was like, wow, fam. Like, I'm amazed by it, man. You know, you gotta be yourself, man. <laughs> like, I was never never like that. I didn't want to be nobody like that to be doing everything they doing, walking like them and all this shit. What what are you doing, Jay? So anyway, you gotta knock that off. So we we was killing, man. We was going at it. He was killing my guard. I mean my uh what, small forward. And they had another big guy. He went to Indiana, I think. I forgot his name. He was playing well. But boy and another I think another guy too, but can't remember his name. But we was battling in there, man, and I'm talking about I was turning up Alley Uber to my boy Brandon Robinson. My dude was out there dunking that joint. Salute to Brandon Robinson, man. And it was it was crazy, man. It was crazy. Like, salute to everybody in Alabama, too, man. <laughs> Got love for y'all, boy. Y'all some athletic folks, man. Brandon Robinson played over there at Auburn, too. That's crazy. But, um, hey, man, those are the answers right there. It was amazing 
I, I brought that game. I brought my energy. I brought my leadership. You know what I mean? I did what I had to do to win. We made it to the championship, the independent championship, and Tubby Smith was able to watch a lot of just a lot of good basketball, man. And he watched me like really dominate a game and really just take over. They also had Sharif Ford on that team that played. He was one of the players' cousin on my team too, as well, point guard. Uh, I forgot his name too, Ford. His name, his last name is Ford. Charles Ford, my man. Charles. <laughs> Charles, I think he's from D.C., a border ball. But salute to you, Charles Ford. Played at Hartford, I think, too, point guard. But, yeah, salute to the Ford family, man. Respect. Always love y'all. That's it for me, man. It's right over left. We the best. I'm your host, Carl Krause, the Cruise and King King Krause. Stay healthy. I'm about to chop up the ginger. About to break it up, chop it up. Get right. Keep healthy. And then make some more strawberry milkshakes. I'm going to make another uh, strawberry smoothie with some uh, watermelon in it. I'll come back on and start talking some more. All right, y'all. Peace. Always love. Easy, y'all. Easy, easy. Headshot, Flintstone, I make the bed rock Used to get around like I'm Tupac Rhythm versus doo-wop Now it's day parties at the rooftop New spot, got the Ready to set it off, better ring the alarm Doing damage to anybody, give a fuck if you want I make it dark like your face in your palm Turn your lights with jaw Motherfucker, it ain't seeing tomorrow These bars are hitting hard Like when you smoking a bong You know I'm rapping for the